Welcome to At The Heart Of It, where we talk about life, celebrate creativity, champion entrepreneurship, and get to the heart of the why behind what we do. Um, If you are a member of the hockey community or even the greater sports community, uh, you likely remember the horrific accident that occurred on on April 6th of 2018 that, that really shook the country. And my guest today is an incredibly resilient, inspiring young man, uh, a survivor of that crash, a formal, former Humboldt Bronco, and a true advocate for mental health, Tyler Smith. Thanks so much for joining me, Tyler. Brayden, it's an absolute pleasure. Thanks very much for having me on. Awesome. Well, I don't want to spend too much time on the on the events that, uh, that happened on April 6th, but uh, as a former junior A hockey player myself, um, I know that day... Uh, it was was a tough day not only for for the hockey community but for the country um, to 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 hear about and our our hearts broke uh, you know for me I'm going well it could have been any any junior A hockey team it could have been any hockey team any you know junior hockey team major junior whatever across the country um, and any any player has been been on a bus for that period of time. Um, it, it, it our, our hearts broke and I know the entire country did what was that what was it like to have the support of the entire country and the community in such a I, I can only imagine I'm going to understate this hard difficult time um in 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 your life and and uh you know be, being able to have that support what was what was that like yeah, um, I guess until I finally kind of woke up and came to in the hospital, um, my parents, I always say, did such a phenomenal job of easing me into the fact that this just happened, and obviously the magnitude of it and the degrees mm-hmm. of it. And, and um, obviously waking up in the hospital and seeing your Justin Trudeau's or your Connor McDavid's or your Don Cherry's walk into your room, you definitely have some uh, some internal questions about what just happened and obviously kind of why or what's going on. I mean, there were so many questions that were definitely lingering in my mind, but for the most part, I think being able to, you know, finally look at my phone and seeing the immense amount of messages and, and, you know, tweets or whatever it was that, that not only I got, but we received as a whole. Um, I think I can only speak for my family and I really did help us through the really tough times. Um, right. I mean, obviously sometimes it was challenging to, to feel like you were always kind of in the spotlight, in the, in the public eye, in the, in the Canadian public eye. Um, but at the, for the most part, I think, I mean, for me, I understood that this is Canada. I mean, we, we live and breathe hockey, you know, every, every small town, every small community, wherever you are, I mean, hockey's a, a piece of your culture. And I think to be able to really understand and, and recognize that support that we constantly received and still receive to this day, um, it's something that can never be taken for granted. I mean, it was something that, like I said, it really helped push me through the hard days and, and, uh, to continually receive the, the gifts at the door, or see the sticks on the front porch mm-hmm. or, or see stickers on cars. I mean, it was just so overwhelming and in the best way possible. Right. Well, and, and, and you speak to how at times it would be difficult. I mean, people will go through difficult times and a lot of the times it's private. And in your case, it wasn't that way. And I mean, you've been incredibly outspoken and, and, um, you know, spoken on TSN and Sportsnet and been, been really open with sharing your story. Um, and you know, was, was there times where, where you wondered, or, or thought about keeping some of that private or, you know, what was the transition and thought for you to go, I need to share this story. And, and it's, you know, it's my, it's my duty now in order to speak up for, for mental health and kind of be an advocate for that. What was that journey like for you from the accident to kind of being, being that advocate for, for mental health? <laughs> to be blunt, it was tough. Um, it was quite the, quite the roller coaster. And I'll say for the first while, it wasn't the uh, best roller coaster to be on. Um, I'm very much a not believer, but for the, the, you know, the years I grew up playing hockey and and kind of being the personality I am, I was, uh, I had it ingrained in me that you kind of just suffer in silence and that's okay. And I mean, Mm -hmm. for me, that was so comfortable for such a, such a long time. And I mean, before the accident, it's not like I ever went through crazy trauma or loss or, or anything really heavy, um, family related or whatever it may be. So, I had no idea how to navigate the situation. I mean, I had no idea how to kind of move forward and take that first step. And 
I think for the, like I said, for the first bit, I mean, it was so incredibly easy to just sit there, tell everybody I'm doing okay and kind of just move on and just put everything to the back burner and, and just try and focus on that day and then kind of just leave that day behind me and, and move on to the next day. And I think the, the first time I really actually spoke in uh, in a public setting was probably not until 11 months after the accident. So it really mm. did take a while. I mean, it really did take some time and, and still to this day, I mean, I had no intentions or expectations of getting up in front of crowds and, and trying to offer some hope to somebody or inspire somebody. And still to this day, I mean, when I do a speech or when I do a podcast, whatever, whatever I do, I just want to be a hundred percent unapologetically myself. I mean, I have no intentions mm-hmm. of being this mental health expert. I mean, I don't even consider myself a mental health advocate because I have so much to learn. I mean, I have so much that I still need to unravel within myself and, and heal within myself. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been refreshing. I mean, it's been super, um, a feeling that I never thought I would long for, you know, that feeling of finishing a speech or receiving a message after a podcast and really understanding that the depths of, of how you help this person in that, in that very moment. And I think, uh, I mean, there's so much that can be said about, you know, hearing an experience or hearing a new perspective or hearing a story of whatever it is. I mean, I listen to podcasts so much just because I love hearing that new perspective. I mean, I love hearing something that works for somebody else that could, I could instill inside my life. So, I mean, like I said, it's been, it's been a journey. I, uh, I never anticipated a marathon. I definitely just wanted a sprint, but I now know that it's a, it's an everyday thing. And I mean, if I can, if I can help just one person doing one public speaking engagement or whatever it may be, then I think that's uh, that's mission accomplished right there. Right. This, this whole podcast for me, when I, when I started it, I, I like you, I, I like hearing other people's perspective and other people's stories. And again, I've said this on many episodes, but it is selfishly for me being able to hear the stories of other people and being able to ask those questions one-on-one. Um, and ultimately I say it in the intro every time it's get to the heart of the why, right? And I'm curious how, um, your why has shifted a little bit, you know, over the last five, five years, right? Um, I'm, I'm sure kind of scholarship through hockey and, and stuff like that was, was, was a focus for a period of time. And, and now, you know, looking, looking, you know, to the future, how, how has that why shifted for you um, over, over the last number of years? Yeah, that's a wicked question. I've actually never really been asked that kind of question, I think. I mean, off the top of my head, I'm very much a live every day as it comes person. I mean, I, I, I think after the accident, I think that I really put an emphasis on that. I mean, the, the whole, you know, living in the moment and, and taking every day as it comes. And um, I think before the accident, I mean, I was such a believer in making sure that everybody else around me was having a good, fulfilling time, whatever we were doing. And um, I think now that that why has definitely shifted from, OK, how can I? Um, make sure that the group around me is having a good time rather than now then, okay, how can I make sure that I'm going into this setting or this situation in a good frame of mind, which I mean, I would have never, ever thought about before. And um, I think there's hmm. been so much uh, personal kind of, um, I'm not soul searching, but I think there's been a lot of little lessons and little like growth periods along the way that has ultimately led me back to the one point and i think it's just about you this is your life and i think being able to take care of yourself first is actually a very self-ish but also courageous thing to do i mean i never ever wanted to be framed as a selfish kid because i'm I'm doing something for myself you know i never wanted Absolutely. to be framed as that yeah especially if, i mean especially in the hockey world i mean there's not there wasn't one particular coach or, or player or anybody that instilled in us that you can't come to the rink and show your emotions or you can't open up on social media or little things like that. But I think it was just an unwritten rule for a lot of us growing up. And I think now, obviously, you're seeing the shift happen. You're seeing the change happen within each sport, especially, I think, especially hockey as well. I mean, you're Robin Leonard yeah. and you're, you're Jonathan Druens and everybody like that. But I think now it's just a matter of, wow, you know, we went, we just went through something that was unlike anything we'll probably ever go through again. And I think now I hope people really start to put an emphasis on how much and how, or how much value they put into their conversations and their relationships and their friendships and their, 
and they, even their memories. I think now, I mean, going through what we went through, I think for me at least, I mean, I, I try to put a big emphasis on making memories. And I think that's a, I mean, even just trying to take pictures. I mean, I always kick myself when I don't take a picture and, and little things like that. Cause unfortunately sometimes that's just all you're left with. And I think being able to really embrace that, but also embrace the good and the bad. I mean, I never wanted to embrace the bad when I was younger. I never wanted to embrace the bad days or the bad thoughts, but now I can, I'm at a point now where I can actually recognize and acknowledge the fact that there is going to be bad days and I can embrace them in a way that I never would have before. And I think, uh, yeah, like I said, there's just been so much kind of small little lessons that I've learned along the way that have, uh, I think really benefited me in the long run. Right. One thing that I really like that you touch on is, is the, it's almost the identity of a hockey player, right? It's it, it, there is something it's, I find it hard to describe but there's that expectation of, you know, being a tough guy and, you know, <laughs> there's also the stigma around just hockey players in general. Like yeah. if anybody knows hockey players, I think they kind of know what, what, what we're, we're kind of talking about here. But um, I know I know for me, when I moved on for the game, it, it was definitely a different scenario. Um, for me, it was it was a, a specific choice of I was done with the game and wanted to move on. Um, but even then, and I've spoken, uh, to, uh, uh, Alicia Risling, who's a, a Olympic bobsled athlete. And when she was done with basketball, she experienced the same thing of that sled identity crisis after you're done with the sport. And I'm curious how you have kind of navigated that. I know it, you just kind of spoke to it, you know, with the transition of the why a little bit, but you know, I, I, I think it's, it's important to, to acknowledge that difference between I am a hockey player and now I'm, I'm not playing anymore. What, what was that journey like for you and, and how have you navigated that? Yeah, it's weird. Like looking back, I mean, junior hockey was never, I guess, like the first thing I wanted to do. I mean, it was definitely, mm. I loved playing hockey. I loved growing up playing hockey. I mean, all my friends in my band of AAA, mid to AAA years, I mean, I had so much fun, but I think for me, I was at a point when I was just done midget that I had literally no idea what I wanted to do in school. So it was just a perfect scenario where you could hop on over to a junior hockey team and, and play your, you know, 60 games or whatever it is and then make some new friends and, and literally just kind of live the life. I mean, as junior hockey players, you do live the life. I mean, it's so easy yeah. every day. I mean, it's, <laughs> I shouldn't say yeah. easy. I mean, it's still a business. I mean, you're still yeah. to some teams a piece of meat, but. I think for the most part, it was just so nice to jump into that and, and not really have to worry about that next step. I mean, I knew that a scholarship or, or something like that was always something I maybe wanted, but I knew that, I mean, I'm not that player. I'm not that guy. I'm just, I'm truly not. I mean, I think I, after my 18 year old season, I, I started to more embrace the role that I wanted to take pride in. And that was the dressing room. That was the off ice Mm -hmm. stuff that was the little things like that so moving that or making that transition out of the game was um i think a little bit less challenging than it would be for a lot for a guy that just has dedicated everything to the game since he started and i mean i have so much respect for those guys i've i have a ton of friends that still play ncaa cis acac and i mean i honestly ask them a question and be like do you still love hockey because i mean unfortunately for me i as much as I didn't love the on ice game, I love everything that attributes to the game of yeah. hockey. I mean, my passion yeah. lies in the dressing room. My passion lies those those breakfasts with the boys. I mean, as cliche as it sounds, I mean, there's so much that I just truly appreciated off the ice. I mean, the on ice was awesome too. I mean, I'm not saying that I hated the game of hockey, but I knew that uh, when I get dressed, I'm not going to play more than maybe 10 minutes, and I'm I'm going to have to definitely be a a cheerleader and I'm going to have to uplift the team, whether it's a a good game or a bad game. And um, I think now I can, I can make that adjustment of figuring out, you know, within my friend groups, how I can still be somewhat that guy. And I think I know now, I think, I mean, currently I'm kind of in it. I mean, I preach vulnerability and I'm, I'm in the, in the depths of trying to figure out what my next step is. And I think, right one thing I know is I want to stay in the game. I, I love the game. I love, mm. I love player development. I love seeing how much focus is put on mental health. Now I love all of that. And I mean, I think 
we're I think our for our generation was the first generation that really dealt with the social media and all that and and to see these kids now with so much pressures on themselves and I think for me I would love to hop in there and and, and somewhat relieve the pressures that they put on themselves or their parents or coaches teachers mm-hmm. whatever it may be so I don't actually know what my next kind of step is or my next path but for the most part I know that I I don't think I'll ever be out of the game and I yeah. I, I, li- I like that I think you would be an incredible like off ice coach for those kids like I I, I can it. only imagine the and I mean I've, I've been in those those locker rooms you've been a rookie like there's there's so many components to to the sport that's just beyond what you're doing on the ice too so yeah. being able to you know help walk a, a you know a rookie through their first year away from home playing with with guys they don't know or getting traded or all, all those pieces that uh, or school or girlfriends or <laughs> you know f- f- relationships on the team like there's all those other things that yeah the the stigma is you've, you've got to be tough and tough skinned and figure it out and kind of suppress stuff so um i think you would be wonderful at that i think you'd be great I appreciate it appreciate it yeah hopefully one day <laughs> <laughs> hopefully one day i'm sure it'll happen sooner than you think um I, I so i've been following you for probably about two hours on social media and i <laughs> love some of the stuff that you're posting like the your most recent post where you did talk about building those memories and wanting to be present and and you know kind of sharing your own um almost mantra in a way of of how you really want to live life um how has like ha- have you felt like you've had to kind of overcome a barrier or a um you know kind of imposter syndrome when you when you're starting to post some of that some of that content at all yeah i think I mean, I've, I think we all kind of understand that. I mean, we're still always going to be not necessarily right in the public eye, but I like, at least for the most part, I mean, I hope nobody ever forgets about that day. And I think for the most Mm -hmm. part, um, me actually doing those posts and me actually kind of, um, being a little vulnerable in front of, um, a good amount of people is my way of trying to somewhat obviously help put people help put people's mental health at the forefront of their lives, but also help people remember that day and help people remember the fact right. that, you know what, I'm, I'm still navigating. You know, I, I, I'm not saying that it's all fine and dandy. It's not, it's not all same sunshine and rainbows. I mean, as much as I try to live a positive life and go into every kind of new situation, a new setting with an open mind and an open outlook, I think it's just impossible to know that, or it's impossible to embrace the fact that, every day is going to be your best day. It's, it, it's impossible. I'm unfortunately, and I yeah. think, I mean, we can understand that and we can respect that as well. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's weird. I mean, it's, it's odd. I mean, I never wanted to necessarily put myself directly in this position, but I've, I've created, I hate saying created a platform. Cause I mean, it, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm not trying to create a platform or a brand. I'm, I'm literally just trying to be authentic and, and help people um, really understand how much goes into your mental health and how much you have to put in the work into your own mental health. And so, I mean, I've, I've started that little clothing line and little things like that and the speaking engagements. And I think that's just kind of my way of, of also allowing myself to heal. I think, uh, I mean, everybody always told me, you know, writing is therapeutic, sharing is therapeutic, you know, try and be vulnerable and, and for that first bit, they're bottling everything up. I, I now can, I now can see how refreshing it is to actually be vulnerable and, 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 you know, speak in front of a crowd and, and just feel that weight off your, off your heart and off your shoulders and, and then just feel that love and support after. I think it's a, it's quite an emotional roller coaster. but for the most part, I mean, if you're able to find that balance and you're able to, to feel how much good you can do and how much positivity you can bring to these people's lives because unfortunately the biggest thing for me, I mean, when I do the the speaking engagements or whatever it is, I mean, I, I can truly look at people and, and never understand how much they're going through and how much, mm-hmm. how big of a fight they're going through and how much struggle they have in their lives. Because unfortunately you just don't know. And I mean, a lot yeah. of the times that 
people have stories that they just don't want to share. And whether it's, you know, growing up, um, trying to be a man, you know, putting your work boots on and every day. And um, I think I always relate it to my dad. I mean, my dad's the epitome of a man. I mean, I can bring any machine, any, bring anything to him and, and he can get it fixed, no problem. But at the end of the day, now we can have a meaningful conversation and an impactful conversation while doing an oil change, you know, like little things like right. that, that I never anticipated we would be doing before. I mean, we have a very strong relationship, but now, I mean, I see how much me hurting affected my family for those first couple of months. I mean, I didn't, I didn't recognize it at the time. I didn't recognize the amount of people, the amount that people were asking me, how are you doing? How are you really doing? And, and me only kind of brushing them off with the classic, I'm doing fine. I'm doing okay. Uh, but now reflecting and looking back, I can see that that's directly hurting my, my people because they feel as though mm -hmm. that they're not doing enough to help me as they're, as I'm suffering. So um, right. yeah, I guess that's uh, my last little tidbit on that. Yeah. How, how has your relationship with, with your, your friends and family evolved kind of since, since then? I mean, you spoke to your dad, which I think is really interesting. I think a lot of, a lot of sons have, have a pretty similar experience with, with their, or relationship with their, with their fathers, right. Where, um, there, there's certain pieces that you share and, and there's certain parts of your life that you share. Um, but maybe not so much the, the more vulnerable pieces. Like how, how has, can you dig a little deeper into to how that has evolved for you? Cause I think it's a really, really interesting, uh, perspective that, that I think a lot of people can relate to. Yeah. I think I always try to relate it to the fact that I value approval. I mean, I, I, before the accident, even right after the accident, I was so emotionally frozen, but I still wanted approval from my peers and my friends and family. So I would go out mm. and I would drink my face off and have the best time and then wake up, not remember anything. And it got to the point, unfortunately, where it was a, a conversation that needed to be had where it's like, chill out. Okay. Like en enough, like stop going so hard and stop trying to be this, this face that you currently can't be. And, um, and now, I mean, I can honestly say that my relationships, my friendships, my, my relationships with my family have probably never been stronger. And I mean, it's taken some time and it's taken a lot of, uh, a lot of searching within myself to have enough strength and courage to be able to sit around a campfire with my friends and, and dive into what's actually going on inside my mind or, or bawling my eyes out on a vacation with my boys just because I can't do it mm -hmm. anymore. And I think yeah, I can, I can see how much, pain is in their eyes, seeing their friend hurt and their, and seeing their friend in pain. And, um, and now, I mean, I, I don't take that for granted. I don't, I mean, I, yeah. I pretty much talk with all of my main friends every single day. And I mean, it's not a case of, we have meaningful conversations every single day, but it's a case of, I could pick up the phone and I can call them and it's no problem at all. You know, it's not a case of, right. oh shit, you know, I don't want to put my burden on somebody else's plate. I don't want to bring this to my friend or bring this to my family. But as much as I still try to hold back, I have to find it within myself to, to realize that, okay, you need this person in this time, you know, and yeah, the people that you surround yourself with are there for a reason. And I think I've, I've never truly put that into perspective, but now I can see that, you know, these people, these these family members, these friends are here for a reason and they're still here for a reason because they care because they yeah. love. I mean, I, I can honestly say when I have a couple of drinks with my friends, we probably say, I love you a thousand times just yeah. as much as it's just for fun, but as much as we also do mean it. And I mean, we've, we've went through a lot as a friend group and, and we're stronger as ever just because of it. And they can, they can understand when I need the night off or they can understand when I say no, you know, they can, as much as I probably don't say no as much as I should, just because I love, <laughs> love my friends and love being with them. I mean, they can, they can put myself, or they can put themselves in my shoes and they'll yeah. never, they'll always have that sympathy and that, that compassion to, to just, yeah. I mean, it's, it's special. It, it, it really is. Yeah. I think it's an important sentiment too, that being confident enough to have those deeper conversations with the people that you love. Um, okay. I, it, again, that's why I started this podcast because I think it's it's it is an excuse in order to try and have some of those those deeper conversations. They're not something that you typically have um, in passing or over text message or especially kind of through COVID. I can't imagine um, 
you know, the, the, the mental health struggles that so many people have gone through over this time because they haven't been able to connect on that level with people. So, um, yeah, that's, that's amazing. So you, you touched on it very br- briefly, uh, a, a couple minutes ago about, uh, your clothing line, which I would love for you to speak more to not a loan co. And I have checked out some of the apparel. I will definitely be ordering something because it's actually some great looking stuff. <laughs> um, and, and I'd love to, to hear the story behind Not Alone, uh, how you started the brand, how you started the company, um, where the inspiration came for the name, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I've, I've told this story a couple times, but I mean, I'm a huge clothing guy. I'm, I'm a huge shoe guy. I'm a huge clothing guy, hat guy. All of it. I mean, I've always, I guess, not necessarily wanted to create my own stuff, but I've always thought in the back of my head, you know, I've I've always kind of had that artistic brain where it'd be like, oh, this would look cool on this, and and so I saw this sweater just like an Instagram ad, and uh, I had these two kind of mental health sayings or phrases in my arsenal for quite some time. They're two that I just like really resonated with and really related to, and and I saw this sweater and I thought, wow, you know, this would be so cool on a sweater and um mm. there's an embroidery shop in Leduc where I'm from and I've been family friends with the people who own it for years and and so I came to them and I presented the idea and they said no problem at all and and so I got three made I think it was for me my girlfriend and my brother and and so I had them for a couple of weeks and I mean I I've, I've, I wore it a couple of times nothing crazy I was a little hesitant to wear it and and then we brought them up on a hike and and we took some photos and, and, you know, nonchalant and, and then I throw it up. And, and once again, I had no expectations of, of what would kind of come after that. And, and mm-hmm. I received quite the influx of, of messages of, of people, you know, where do you get this? How can I get this? You know, this is amazing. And, um, and then that, I think that's what really spiraled into where we are today. I mean, being able to, to donate back to a couple charities and foundations. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, my original thought process was thought process was with not alone was honestly just wearing your vulnerability proudly. I mean, I think Mm. there's so many kind of brands and stuff that not necessarily hide behind the logo, but you do have to dive deep and you do have to search. And, and so to be able to put these sayings just slapped on a hoodie or a t-shirt or whatever it is, I think really does make people feel good. And I think, I mean, I've, I've received quite a few messages about, you know, conversations being started, you know, meaningful conversations being started from the, the messaging on the, on the brand. And I think that's uh, now is the, the ultimate goal. I mean, now it wasn't something I originally thought of, you know, I didn't think, Oh, you know, I'm going to wear this and I'm going to have a bunch of people come up to me and, and say, you know, I needed that today or whatever it may be. But I think now I would love to get to a world where, I mean, anybody can wear it in the grocery store. Anybody could wear it anywhere. And, and just make people think for that split second, you know, am I doing okay? And I think Mm -hmm. that can translate into a lot of conversations that need to be happened because I know that a lot of people will wait. A lot of people will prolong that suffering just because they don't know how to initiate or facilitate those conversations. So if I can have one small piece of getting that conversation going, um, yeah, I mean, it's not about me. It's not about me at all. It's never been about me. I don't want it to be about me. I literally just want, people to to really understand that your mental health and and your health in general is important and to be able to to acknowledge the fact that you're struggling or acknowledge the fact that you aren't alone in this fight is huge and i think i one piece of advice that i've always got is don't compare your stories you know Mm. don't go to somebody and compare your story you know i we can't go up to people and be like, Oh, well, we lost this many people. You know, how many people did you lose? It's not about that. It's never been about that. I don't want it to be about that. At the end of the day, everybody goes through something. Everybody is fighting a battle that you don't know about. So to be able to have that compassion to, to hear them out and hear their perspective through it all um, has really been beneficial in my kind of healing journey, just because I can, I can have that compassion to understand that I'm not going to judge that person by his character or her character. It's because you mm-hmm. don't know. You never know. You you don't know until you ask. So right there you go. I that's that's amazing. If anybody was wanting to check out the apparel line, where where would they go to do that? Yeah, I uh, I haven't been the best marketer. I will say I, I never <laughs> took marketing or anything like that in school. So it's definitely a 
it's been a learning process, but you can go to my Instagram, uh, Smitty269, or else we have a uh, an Instagram page. I, I better find out what it actually is. Jeez, I don't, know, <laughs> I don't even know why. I don't know my uh, not dot alone dot co. So it's uh, the link. Link is in the bio there if anybody wants to support. But uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. Awesome. Well, we're going to start to wrap up here in a second. And like I, like I mentioned before we started recording, we're, we'll do a little rapid fire. Um, but I mean, you've shared so many nuggets of wisdom today and, and I, I appreciate you being so open and honest with, with kind of sharing your, your experience and your perspective. Um, and like just alluded to, obviously there are people going through things that we don't understand and, and people that might not be comfortable with, with sharing with other, with, you know, loved ones or, or people that they trust right now. But I'm curious if, if there's someone listening right now going through a tough time or has lost a loved one or, or, um, you know, is struggling with something, what, what sort of advice or, or, or words of support would, would you share with them? Um, I think I always had the misconception that, you know, there's a magic formula, there's a routine that you can go through in order to heal or recover. But um, I think I now know that there's no right or wrong way to do it. You know, there you did, but you just need to start somewhere. And I think, you know, I got to, I, I opened up and I, for the first time, and I kind of shared that I wasn't doing okay. And, and my girlfriend kind of highlighted the fact that, wow, you know, like that is the most courageous and bravest step you can take. And um, I never looked at it that way, you know, like I always attached it to shame and weakness and, and judgment. And, and so now I think it is, it does take strength. It does take a lot of courage. It does, it does take a lot of bravery. It does take a lot to be able to, to be vulnerable with your peers or be vulnerable in whatever setting you are. So um, just don't undermine the fact that what you're going through um, shouldn't be, or should be heard, you know? It should be, no matter what, it should be heard, it should be listened to, and it should be appreciated. And um, I think, yeah, back to my point, you just need to start somewhere. And unfortunately, it's not a fine and dandy journey after that. It's going to take work. It's going to be an everyday thing. But um, one quote that I always attach with is, mental health isn't a journey to be one. It's a journey to continue walking. And I think that's something Mm -hmm. that is so simple but means so much. You know, it's it's okay to have bad days, but it's also okay to – to look at yourself and be proud of yourself for just getting out of bed for, you know, for just getting outside for a walk. And um, there's so many little things that you don't even think about or you don't even really hold at a high appreciation just because you've never been in that situation before. But now being in those situations, you can understand that the little things, you know, the podcast walks, the, the sitting there with your favorite book, the putting on a record, whatever it is, whatever works for you, um, utilize it, you know, and mm-hmm. utilize the people around you because the people around you are not going to shy away from what, what you're going through if they truly care about you. So, uh, yeah, that's right. probably my uh, best piece of advice. I love it. Awesome. Well, now we're going to dive into rapid fire. So, uh, it, it is, it is one of my, whenever I was being interviewed, it was my favorite part of the, the interview yeah. because it was random questions that, <laughs> you know, are kind of <laughs> out of context and fun. So, um, I've got about eight, eight or nine here. They start pretty, pretty simple. And then we, we get a little bit deeper. So are you ready? Absolutely. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. So the first one is what is one book that you feel everyone should read? Okay. Not a huge book reader, I will say, but um, I guess the Theo Fleury book, I can't remember which one it is exactly. Not playing, with, playing with fire, playing with is fire. It, yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's quite a, it, it's intense, but I, uh, wow. Yeah. What, what a read. There you go. That's a good one. Uh, next one is your favorite song, whether it right now or just of all time, man, I'm such a music person. Um, of all time. I mean, there's so many Queen songs that I could go to, but right now, <laughs> um, geez, I, I'm such a weird music guy. I, there's a song called Groceries by Mall Rat, and it's one of my faves. Uh, okay. Peanut Butter Waffles by Ryan Caravillo is really good. Yeah, I could go off. I, I, I listen to all types <laughs> of music and, and love my music. So That's awesome. Uh, next one is Salty Snack or Sweets? Salty. Do you have a favorite salty snack? Um, I do love a good pretzel. 
Um, like a soft pretzel but, or like a hard pretzel? Like a nice hard pretzel, honestly, as weird as okay. that may sound. Or else a good chips and dip combo. Um, I don't go out and willingly grab sweets, but if they're around, I will devour them. But yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I'd have to think about that more. But yeah, definitely the... I'm always a good chips and dips guy. And then, uh, nice. yeah. Perfect. Who isn't a chips and dip person? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, lazy beach vacation or crazy travel adventure? Crazy travel adventure. Do you have a destination that you want to hit up on your crazy travel adventure? Uh, uh, we went to Europe probably two years ago and we're dying to get back. So I, yeah. uh, I would kill for a good Italy, Greece, Croatia, uh, little swing, but that's, nice. uh, that's next on the bucket list. But if not, I mean, I've heard Costa Rica is amazing. I've heard Australia is amazing. So there's, uh, there's quite a few that I would love to hit, but unfortunately, uh, it's, uh, it's tough right now. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite movie or TV show? Ozark and Yellowstone, no doubt. I mean, Yellowstone for sure. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Yellowstone was the good old John Dutton. Um, yeah. And did you did movie, you hear about T- Tim McGraw and Faith Hill yeah, are in the prequel? So they're in the prequel <laughs> in the 1886 or whatever it's called. So it's like the Dutton family when they when they settled in Montana. So it's like years and years and years before the John Dutton. It's how they actually got the ranch. And Tim McGraw and Faith Hill are starring in it apparently yeah so the theme song is just gonna be this kiss i love it all right yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and as for movies um the dark knight is my favorite that of all time is a yeah. great movie the heath ledger performance was just yeah, immaculate and then Step Brothers. <laughs> Step Brothers. yeah I, I love the variety i love the variety yeah man. Uh, i like to keep it open yeah, there you go. So you're you're in Leduc. Actually, okay. I'm in Calgary now. Oh, you're in Calgary right now, but you're from yeah, Leduc. Yeah, I'm okay. from Leduc, but residing in Calgary uh, ever since January of this past year. So okay. So my next question is, what is your favorite local small business? So I guess it could be in Leduc or it could be in Calgary. Oh, in Calgary, gosh, I'm we're big cocktail restaurant tier people um okay. but i don't know if that's i guess local um we've definitely tried to support local as much as possible um but i i will say i probably have to do better at straying away from the mainstream cha- chains um there's a good one in Leduc called jarred um i didn't use it utilize it as much as we wanted to but it's kind of like a refillery um okay. so you can just like bring your and you can get you know lotion soaps but then again it has like pickled carrots pickled asparagus like it's got just everything you could think of and it's like it's a neat little store i will say that's awesome that's that's a that's a great one or um, i gotta plug uh rumor board shop in uh in leduc they, they're my guys they're uh snowboarding and uh skateboarding shop and just incredible incredible human beings and they just open up their sec- second location in edmonton so awesome that's that's good we'll have to we'll have to make sure that we uh we promote those guys um next one is i'm sure you have many but one quote that you live by yeah the mental health one was always a good one um there's one by kobe i gotta unfortunately find it here there's one by kobe that i've always just like aligned with perfectly and um i think it was sorry let me find it oh yeah the most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they want to do. And I think mm. that's, uh, that's something that is just so powerful and so wow, like just hits. Yeah. Like, wow. And, uh, yeah, yeah, besides that, I mean, there's definitely a good array of quotes that I like to align with, but that Colby one is, uh, is awesome. That's, that's great. I, well, I think you do a wonderful job of that already. I appreciate so, it. <laughs> um, so the last two here are, who is someone that you would like to thank for helping you get to where you are today and why? Well, I love my family to death, but uh, it actually is probably my billet mom. Uh, she was mm-hmm. the one that uh, looked me dead in the eyes and said, when I left Humboldt there for the second time, she said, you're going to promise me that you're going to, uh, you're going to seek help in the proper way and you're going to, take care of yourself and that's uh i think what really helped me figure out that you know what as much as 
I want to help other people. You know, I, I still need to help myself and I still need to put in the work for myself. And, and, uh, yeah, shout out, uh, shout out Nancy. There you go. Well, I, I can attest to, to the importance of, of having good billets and, uh, yeah, there's, there's the, the hearts, the size of the hearts of, of those people that take in random teenagers <laughs> from, from other, <laughs> yeah. from other places in the country, uh, only for a short period of time and welcome their, into their home and their families and all that kind of stuff is, is special. So, um, love that big shout out to Nancy. Um, so the last one here is if there was a piece of advice that you could share with your younger self, what would it be? You know what? I've thought about this question and I honestly, I think I've learned so much that I definitely, I think it would be nice to go back. And I think one thing that really comes to mind is obviously self care is not selfish. Um, Mm. I think that that's something that I now can appreciate I now can appreciate the the meaningfulness of of self care in what whatever shape or form or whatever, whatever whether it's going for a round of golf or whatever it is. I mean, I I'm pretty privileged in that sense. But um, other than that, I think you know it's so cliche to say don't judge a book by its cover. You know, don't judge a person before you meet them and everything. But I really truly now can appreciate that quote as well you know just giving everyone you meet a chance and um there's been so many times where i still find myself you know kind of prejudging somebody because i don't actually know their background or their story or they're not given um given the proper time and effort into into the task at hand or whatever it is but i uh i've had some humbling moments where it not necessarily bites me in the ass but it's a it's kind of a nice little slap in the face wake up call where it's like, okay, you, you, you need to understand that you have to give people a chance and you have to understand that that person sitting in the park with a, with a bouquet of flowers, you don't know, you just don't know. And I mean, as much as it's not, I guess, okay right now to just walk up to them and give them a hug. I mean, even just having that thought is, uh, is more compassion that than you can, than I can possibly have compared to what I used to have. So, Mm. um, yeah. There you go. Well, Tyler, I really appreciate you taking the time. It was an absolute pleasure getting to chat with you. Um, and, uh, I, I hope we can, we can, we can even get together in person. I'm in Calgary too. So we can even get together for, 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 uh, for wings or something like that, which would be awesome. Um, but if anybody would wants to, to follow your journey, um, where, where can they find you online? Yeah, I guess probably the old, smitty 269 um account on instagram is yeah. probably the best bet i i don't post as much as uh as i maybe used to but i uh that's i guess where i kind of d- just share even if it's a sharing a story or whatever it is so yeah there you go well that's awesome well thank you so much again uh it was it was a pleasure and uh look forward to to connecting again soon brighton it was a pleasure thanks for the conversation i appreciate it